Yo, God bless everyone. Um, real quick, I want to add um, something onto that last video because I was in Galatians 2 and 3 and 5, and I wanted to go further into chapter 5, just two verses. I stopped. I was reading chapter 5, verse uh, 6 through 9, and we'll go and do 6 through 11 to give further context and to just drive it in even further what is happening, this line that is being drawn, these snakes that are coming up out of the grass, and that we got to just bop them on the head with the grace of God. <laughs> um, and by preaching, we just preach the truth, and these people, their offense exposes them. Hallelujah. So, um, we know that we are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. And as Galatians continues to talk about, it is the fact that it is grace or law. Either you're in the, the old creation, in the law and trying to obey the law, or you're in the new creation that Jesus Christ has made by the shedding of his perfect blood, his death, that he paid the debt for Everyone sinned. He tasted death for everyone, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead for our justification. And in that resurrection, he created that it was a creative act as well. His death was not just um, destroying uh, what was against us, but he, he, in that act, was it was a creative act for us, for the body of Christ, for the church, creating that new man. Hallelujah. Anyways, a little bit of side note there. We read Galatians chapter 5 as well, and I went six through nine, but now we're gonna go six through 11, just to give further context, as well as drive it in even further, that it is grace all the time. There is no mixture. It is not grace and law. For again, verse nine, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. It is grace alone always. And again, he is talking in Galatians to a saved people who are being deceived by people who have come in and are now preaching a false gospel. We see this happening right now in, in the world. People are preaching false gospels left and right. And those of us who stand in the blood of Jesus Christ alone, we will not be shaken. Hallelujah. And as we continue to preach the power in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in his blood alone for the remission of sins, in which we have redemption through his blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those people who are preaching false gospels will rail and accuse and use mischaracterizations and slander and their offense will expose them as enemies of the cross. And this is happening so that the body can be without spot or blemish. The church can be without spot or blemish. This is not about us being perfectly sinless. No. That is not it, because that is not what we're called to do. We are called to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. A, the body, the church without a bride, without spot or blemish, is these false teachers, these people preaching false gospels, coming in and trying to steal our crowns and steal our joy, which we hold fast our crown with confidence, which is having faith in the blood of Jesus Christ alone. And we stay there. We, we begin in the gospel and we stay in the gospel. Hallelujah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, we're going to read Galatians chapter 5, 6 through 11. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So your law keeping, like the Jew or the Gentile, it's, there is neither Jew or Gentile. Circumcision, no, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything because it's all by faith. It doesn't matter if you're circumcised or uncircumcised, or if you were obeying the law, or you're not obeying the law, if that makes sense. I'm not to, um, advocating people go out and go just like party and drink and murder and steal. It's not what I'm saying. When people say that we who stand in the grace of God are giving a license to sin, that they just don't understand what they're actually saying. We do not do that. We stand in the blood of Jesus Christ, and we continue to preach the blood of Jesus Christ and his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's where we stand. So, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you, that ye should not obey the truth, which is to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because people have come in and tried to convince them that now, to grow, to be spiritual, to earn blessings, whatever, they have to now obey the law. No. Faith. Everything. Everything is faith. Everything is by grace. If you want to try and earn blessings from God, you're no longer resting in the, in the blood of Jesus Christ in faith. You're in unbelief, working a wage, trying to obey the law to get something from God. That's, that's in the flesh. That's not in the spirit. So verse eight, 
This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. This perversion of gospel is not from him that called you because he called you and you received the spirit by faith. Are ye now perfected in the flesh? Galatians chapter three, verse one through three. This persuasion, this false gospel, this mixing, this leaven does not come from the one who called you, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He called you by faith. Hallelujah. Verse nine, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. He has confidence that they will come back to grace, that they will rest in grace and they will continue to grow in faith, not grow in the law because we cannot bring again ourselves to something that we are dead to. We cannot build ourselves again into something that we are dead to. We will, it will avail to, it will not avail anything for us. It will be nothing for us. So he has confidence in you through the Lord that he will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Again, pointing out, I have faith in the Lord working in you in the Galatians that you will come back to faith or you will come back to grace and you will not mix law. But the person that has come in and is trying to preach the law, preach this false gospel, preach self-righteousness and pride, and preach old creation and things that we are dead to, that person will bear his judgment. The Lord will handle that. Hallelujah. And I love this part. And verse 11, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. If he's going to preach circumcision, if he's going to preach, we're saved by grace through faith, and then preach circumcision, which is to say, now go obey the law. If he's then preaching, obey the law, go get circumcised, go uh, do this, go do that. He wouldn't be suffer, suffering persecution because those men, the Pharisees, the law keepers, they would say, yes, hallelujah, amen, be holy. Go be holy and go obey the law and go live under the law and things like that because they want glory from men. They don't want the righteousness of God, which is by faith. They want their own righteousness, which they are trying to earn by keeping the law. They are prideful. They are ignorant of the grace of God and they do not believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. And why do I yet suffer persecution? He suffers persecution. We suffer persecution and trials and all these things and slander and mischaracterizations and all of this trash, this garbage, because we preach hallelujah in the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We preach Jesus Christ as our righteousness. And that is it because we are found in Christ. We are never found outside of Christ and our righteousness is not outside of Christ. Our righteousness is Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God is by faith in Jesus Christ. So we suffer persecution because we're not pointing to ourselves. We are not looking for the glory of men. We are not looking for achievements and accolades and all of these things. We are not looking to our flesh to be satisfied. We are not trying to perfect ourselves in the flesh. And again, we are not looking for the glory of men. We are not looking for the praises and the honor from men, which those Pharisees and the law keepers who continually point you to the law are doing because they want their own righteousness. They want to be their own savior and they do not believe the blood of Jesus is enough for them. Oh man, they are in unbelief. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. The offense of the cross is being more and more magnified and apparent as we, hallelujah, the born again believers in the blood of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection stand in the true gospel. And it offends and stumbles those Pharisees and those law keepers because they cannot handle the fact that it is not about them. It is not about their righteousness. It is not about them doing anything. They cannot earn salvation and they cannot keep themselves saved. It is by grace. And they want so badly to earn it. They want so badly to be able to boast. Excuse me. I don't know where. Uh, it's probably in Romans somewhere. Oh, wow, I happen to just flip and go straight to Romans. Um, give me one sec, excuse me. I'm looking for that verse that says um, it's no longer of, or if you work, it's no longer of grace, but it is of works. 
Uh, I am so sorry. Forgive me. I know. I feel like it's in Romans somewhere. I could be wrong. But anyways, yeah, anyways, praise the Lord that he has done it all. And it's all about him. We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That's Romans chapter 3. Ah, there it is. Okay, thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 3, verse 27. We'll start there. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. Nobody can boast in themselves because it's a gift. Nobody can boast in how awesome they are or how good they are or how obedient they are. No, you cannot boast. If you're boasting, you're in the flesh. If you're boasting, you're believing that you can do something to be better. No, everyone is on a level playing field. Everyone is on even ground. It doesn't matter if you have murdered or you told a, told a white lie. A sin is a sin and your obedience is not better because you obey more commandments. No, everyone is on equal footing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no boasting. It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. <sighs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we also know, again, I don't, I don't know where it is, but we know that it is, it is by grace. For if it is if you try to mix grace and works, grace and law, it's no more of grace than it becomes work because it's that little leaven. I talked about that in the last video, so we won't go into that. But hallelujah, we continue to preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our righteousness is Jesus Christ. And we will stand firmly rooted and grounded in truth and in love in the Lord Jesus Christ, wanting to grow in the full knowledge of who he is in the fullness of God. And that happens by faith as we rest in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's all about him. We do not want to earn. We cannot earn our own righteousness. We cannot boast. It is excluded. Everything is by faith, which everybody has. Everybody is on a level playing field. It is by grace and grace alone. Hallelujah. All right. I know I trailed off a little bit there at the end as I was trying to find that verse. So pardon me and uh, please forgive me. But I pray that you enjoyed this.